Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from not the Commander's Core studio, as you might have noticed. Uh, yeah, the background's slightly different. I'm actually at a friend's place right now on the road, and well, uh, yeah, there's there's some construction going on, so just ignore that. Regardless, today's episode comes to you courtesy of one of my amazing patrons, Jason, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron, and I truly couldn't do this without support from amazing patrons like Jason. So again, Jason, thank you so much. And actually, for today's episode, Jason's going to handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch, this is Jason from Oakdale, Minnesota, aka Jace the Beard Sculptor. And for my deck tech, I would like to see you build around Jury Master of the Review, focusing on creating as many treasures as possible and then flinging Jury at all my opponents for maximum damage. Thanks, Mitch. Well, Jason, that is a fantastic pick, and it sounds like a lot of fun, so let's jump into it. Jury is a 1 1 human shaman for black red rakdos here we go whenever you sacrifice a permanent you get a counter on jury and whenever jury dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target so essentially yeah get things out that you want to sacrifice like treasures and when you do so get jury to become absolutely massive then well we fling jury at one of our opponents and what happens with that essentially is well, Jury also is going to trigger, again, damage equal to its power to any target, so we can assign damage to another opponent as well, or, yeah, I mean, if we need to double up the damage on one opponent, take them out, or, yeah, split up that damage, whatever we need to do, absurd amounts of damage are going to be had, our opponents can be taken out in absolutely no time, and yes, the more damage, the more fun everyone will have, or at least we're going to have fun, regardless, we're going to have fun with our budget here, because this is just a $14.92 deck, according to Moxfield, so that is incredibly budget friendly. Now keep in mind that it does include the cost of shipping or basic lands, but you might already have those basics, or you can borrow from my friend or your LGS, or you can just buy them in bulk. Regardless, incredibly budget friendly. If you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deckless link in the description below. Now with all that said, let's jump into the tactics. First up, let's start off with tactic number one, treasure map, and let's talk about ways to get a good amount of treasures into play once. Treasure map with, uh, yeah, Smoke Spirits 8 is the first card we're going to talk about. A sorcery for X and a red. Basically, you get X creatures with X number of red auras on them, essentially. You say, hey, everyone gets a smoke blessing attached to them. Here you go. And all of a sudden, what happens is when the enchanted creature dies, it deals one image to the controller. Ow! And then also, we get a treasure token. So double the pain, essentially, again, because with those treasure tokens, we get more mana and we also get more counters on our commander. Now, speaking of our commander, Fake Your Own Death is a great card with it. It. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus two plus zero in gains. When this creature dies, turn to the battlefield, tap to its owner's control, and you get a treasure token. So basically, a way to get our commander back right away, essentially, after it's taken out, maybe by us, and also we get another treasure to help build things up again. Speaking of building things up, though, Kalein Reclusive Painter. Oh my goodness. ETB make a treasure token. Other creatures you control enter the battlefield additional counter on them for each mana from a treasure spent to cast them. So yeah, we can actually just get things going with our commander by just, you know, using some treasures to actually get it out and also make other creatures big, too. Noble's first kind of a delayed way to get some treasures in play but it can be very effective and just battlefield tap three coin counters on it tap remove a coin counter from it make a treasure token so yeah we can get basically four treasures with this and also we've got other ways to sacrifice artifacts as well so yeah we can sacrifice this too for an extra counter on our commander then we've got lobelia sackville baggins two three flash menace etbs Exalt our creature card from an opponent's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Then you make extra, extra tokens or exits its power. So if you're taking things out, you can make an absurd amount of treasure tokens once you take out a big creature. Next up, Swashbuckler Extraordinaire. Speaking of big creatures. Hey, uh, this, I mean, it's just a 2 2, but we've got ways to make a creature even bigger. A ETBs, make a treasure token. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice one or more treasures. When you do, up to that many creatures gain double strike until left turn. So we could even kind of like one shot KO an opponent with our commander, most likely as well. Rapacious Dragon. ETBs make two treasure tokens. Very nice. We've got Spiteful Repossession. It's going to deal damage. Each opponent controls more lands than you, equal to the difference. And you create a number of treasure tokens, equal to the damage dealt this way. So this can just be a massive, just one-off make treasures. How about Maroon? Another creature that can help us out. 7-7 seven, seven Construct with Trample. Enters the battlefield of mana from a treasure spent to cast it. You get a treasure token for each mana spent to cast it. Essentially, yeah, we've got plenty of ways to make treasures, right? If we use 8 treasures to cast this, well, that's 8 counters on our commander. And then also we get those 8 treasures back. So that can be absolutely huge. Yeah, plenty of great ways to make treasures.
But now let's move on to tactic number two, treasure trove, because we've got some great repeatable ways to make treasures, like, you know, Beam Town Beat Stick. Cuckoo Creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has menace. So, yeah, a way that we can actually get our commander through that's fantastic. Top of that, whenever Cuckoo Creature deals combat to a player or battle, you get a treasure token. So, we can also, again, grow our commander with those. Sticky Fingers. Cuckoo Creature has menace, and whenever this creature deals combat to a player, create a treasure token. And on top of that, when it dies, you draw a card so we can replace that as well. Guild Art is in a great background for us. Commander creatures you own have, whenever it attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, you get two treasure tokens. So, again, another incentive to be aggressive with our potentially massive commander next up tavern scoundrel really fun whenever you win a coin flip you get two treasure tokens oh and we can pay one to tap and sacrifice another permanent to flip a coin there you go and again there's plenty of ways that we really care about you know actually sacrificing permanents like you know again like an artifact that we talked about earlier that might not sacrifice itself vault robbers another great one to utilize our sacrifice cards pay one tap exile a creature card from your graveyard create a treasure token next up captain lantern restore and hasty uh attacks get a treasure token yep that can be absolutely huge on top of that whenever you sacrifice a treasure Treasure. It's going to be a plus one with zero until end of turn. So again, this can kind of be like a secondary commander if you need it. Sacrifice a lot of treasure on any turn and fling this as well. Or just be really aggressive in combat. Speaking of being aggressive, Gadric, when we are aggressive, well, hey, at the beginning of your end step, you get a treasure token for each non tone creature you control that died this turn. We've got ways to sacrifice again. We've got ways to make a lot of treasures with this throughout the game. Groin, Dwarf, Emissary. Whenever cast a Zork spell, create a treasure token. So again, when you cast those artifacts, this can really help this. Tap, sacrifice a treasure, go to our creature. That can be deadly against our opponent's creatures as well. Mahadi Emporium Master. This one can be huge as well. Again, at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. That counts our opponent's creatures as well, so keep that in mind. Shiny Impetus. Speaking of opponent's creatures, hey, slap this on one of them, plus two, plus two, and it's goaded. And whenever it attacks, you get a treasure token. So again, benefits for you and pain for your opponents. Under City Scrounger, take advantage of any creatures dying. Tap, create a treasure token. Only if a creature died this turn. That's going to happen a lot throughout the game. Horde Hauler, a great vehicle for us. Five, five, crew three, trample. Deals counter to a player, create a treasure token for each artifact they control. Yeah, if you're playing against someone that, well, maybe isn't in green and has mana rocks in play great if you're playing against someone that is playing artifact tribal absurd amounts of treasures can be had hoarding ogre basically attack roll ad 20 if you get a one through nine get a treasure token if you get a one 10 through 19 that's two if you get a 20 congratulations you're the proud owner of three more treasures and finally rose room treasurer basically a repeatable effect to get more and more treasure tokens whenever another creature in Valfinder control you get a treasure token for the first or second time it's resolved otherwise you can pay x and deal x damage to any target this can also be a win condition for us But now let's move on to tactic number three, Outlet Mall. And first up, well, we've got an outlet for us to sacrifice a lot of things. Fane the Broker, a 3-3 three, three human warlock for three. Tap, sacrifice a creature, two counters on a creature. Cool, get more counters on your commander. Tap, remove a counter from a creature control, get a treasure token. So that can just basically kind of net itself out. Just say, hey, get a counter off our commander, get a treasure. Sacrifice that, get another counter on our commander. Tap, sacrifice an artifact, make a 2-1 white black inkling creature token with flying cool we need to do that we can and also we can pay mana to untap this to do it again speaking of mana ruthless knave pay two and a black sacrifice creature two treasure tokens and sacrifice three treasure tokens draw a card so card advantage and also a great sacrifice outlet for us speaking of which skullport Mer merchant enters the battlefield to get treasure token and pay one of black sacrifice a creature or a treasure draw a card so yeah some fantastic card advantage for us and again these sacrifice outlets can just be so valuable for us to be able to sacrifice our commander whenever we need to But now we're going to do tech number four, death and taxes, because we got some creatures that actually can help us, you know, from not being there as well. Impulsive build for when it dies, create treasure token. On top of that, you can encore it in a couple copies back out essentially and say, hey, you know what? Let's get some more treasures. Shambling gas. When it dies, you choose one. You can give a creature minus one, minus one, or get that treasure token. Prize statue. When it ETBs and put it into grave from play, create a treasure token. Again, we can take advantage of this with those sacrifice permanent type effects. Page of the arts, a great one as well. ETBs make a treasure, and when it dies, make a treasure. So yeah, we're going to be sacrificing this. Now let's move on to tactic number five, Hotline Fling, because, yeah, we are going to be punishing our opponents again, not just with our commander's death trigger, but with, you know, an effect that also, well, can actually utilize our commander's power, like Thud. Sacrifice a creature, deals damage, equal to sacrifice creature's power to any target. So again, for a single mana, we essentially double up on our commander's effect and initiate our commander's effect. Cal Cell Sword, burn together for a single red mana adventure. Target creature control deals damage, equal to power to any other target, then sacrifice it. And also it's a 2-2 and enters the battlefield. They counter on it for each creature that dying or control this turn. So this can become pretty massive as well. But yeah, again, more importantly, lovely fling effect. Next up, Dying Wish. We can kind of triple up our commander's effect with a 
life link effect by putting this on our commander chain creature control when it dies target player loses x life you gain x life for x is power yeah that can be quite deadly next up fling yes what this category is named after what the cards are named after essentially sacrifice one creature instant speed deal damage equal light power to any target target creature or player I should say essence harvest no need to actually sacrifice a creature with this one target player loses x life and you gain x life for x seed grace power and creatures you control that can be absolutely huge souls fire again don't need to sacrifice our commander to do this target creature control deals damage equal to its power to any target so again stay in play get more massive and deal even more damage later next up Vidalian thrill seeker pay one sacrifice creature deals damage equal to its power to any target also backup too which is lovely as well but yeah being able to sacrifice creatures on demand this can be absolutely huge huge especially for a on-demand flame effect like this grab the reins yet another good one basically until on turn you gain control target creature gain taste on turn if you want to you know threaten a creature you can or hey um yeah sacrifice a creature then it's gonna deal damage to that creature's power to target creature or player and you can also entwine this if you want to do both but more than likely you're just gonna do the one to sacrifice your commander gravitic punch a great repeatable effect one that you can do twice and you can keep your commander in play deal damage equal to power target player and also jump started to do it again by discarding a card and you know playing its cost again peric blast this one we sacrifice a creature deal damage equal power to any target so again basically a fling effect with a draw on it as well again instant speed Certland Flinger, a great repeatable effect. Whenever it attacks, you can sacrifice another creature. When you do, it's going to deal damage equal to power to any target. And uh, don't worry about the giant. Our commander's not a giant, but it's going to be a giant amount of damage. And finally, Stalking Vengeance, another great way to really take advantage of power. Hey, 5-5 five, five, Haste, whenever a creature you control deal dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. Again, yet another way to say, hey, my commander's in play. Let's make it massive with all those treasures. Then let's just sacrifice it, fling it at someone, get our commander's damage as well off its own trigger, and then get this trigger to, to really take out players quickly. Now, so we're going to do tactic number six, double trouble, because, yeah, we can take out opponents even quicker with something like Black Blade or Forge. Plus, plus one for each land we control to our commander. Again, what matters is not the number of counters on our commander, but its power. So, this can be a great way to say, let's just get things started very quickly and get our commander's power up in absolutely no time. Speaking of which, Cranial Plating. This one's quite interesting when it comes to working with our commander. Plus, one zero for each artifact you control. So, again, a lot of these artifacts that might just stay in play, like Mana Rocks, cool. Yeah, yeah, we can just get extra power for our commander. And also, hey, if you keep your treasures in play too this can just also just say you know what we're counting you right now as well use the mana later when you really want to finally unleash fury instant speed this can be so deadly double power tar creature until end of turn this can say hey you know what our flings are more effective our commander's trigger is more effective everything is more effective let's double it up for again just two mana Next up, let's move on to tactic number seven, smash in, grab. Battle Grudge is a great one. Sorcery, sacrifice a non-land permanent. Each opponent chooses a permanent control, chooses a type with it, and sacrifices that too. And we also draw a card. So again, another way to initiate a sacrifice if we need to. And get rid of some things. Feed the Swarm, short heart creature, enchantment, and opponent controls. Lose life, build mana value. That's going to be well worth it. Plundering Barbarian, ETBs. We can either store an artifact or, hey, make a treasure. Yeah, we've got an absurd amount of ways to make treasures, including involuntary employment. Gain control, target creature, until turn. Untap that creature, gain haste, until turn, create a treasure token. And again, with all of our effects sure if you want to sacrifice or you know other outlet effects too, sacrifice that creature afterwards and say you're not getting it back they've got visions of ruin basically every opponent sacrifice an artifact and all of a sudden we get a treasure for each one of those and we can also flash this back from our graveyard as well to do it again then there's rankle and torbrand flying first strike haste love those keywords when it deals combat to a player or battle choose any number everyone gonna get a treasure token cool yeah sure why not everyone sacrifice a creature also sure why not and if a source would deal damage to a player or a battle this turn deals that much damage plus two so sure we'll take that extra two damage as well <laughs> Now let's go into tactic number eight, dig down. We're going to dig down even further. Viserys here, sacrifice a creature, scry one. Yeah, again, amazing to have free sacrifice outlets like this one and amazing card advantage throughout the game with it. Collector's Vault, pay two tap, draw a card, discard a card. So some great looting there. And also, hey, make a treasure token. Grim Harvest Specs, well, these creatures are going to be sacrificing. But every non-token creature control dies, draw a card. Sure, we'll draw a lot of cards with that. Mask of Grizzlebrand, creatures flying lifelink, yet a way to, well, just say, hey, you know what, opponents? Um, we're going to be coming through with our massive commander and taking you out and also getting a ton of life. And also, when we take our commander out, we get to draw X cards by paying X life where X is our commander's power. Yeah, um, that's going to be an absurd enough cards that we draw. Then there's Sign of Opulence. 
Whenever in or another non-token vampire control dies, you get a treasure token on top of that by paying a single red mana, sacrifice two artifacts, exit the top card of your life, play the card this turn. So basically some great repeatable impulse draw. Seize the spoils, discard one card to draw two, make a treasure token. Then there's Cypal Ball, sacrifice a creature, gain X life, draw X cards or X is its power. That's going to be an absurd amount. And so yeah, we gain and our opponents have a lot of pain. Corvald and Noble Thief, the first and second lore counters are get a treasure token. Lovely. The third one is exile top three cards from both library. We can play those cards this turn. So some great additional card advantage or temporary card advantage i should say as well pirates pillages discard one card draw to make two treasure tokens we can make even more though with inspired tinkering exit the top three cards your library impulse draw essentially and then also create three treasure tokens so again yeah plenty of ways to make an absurd amount of treasures throughout the game with this deck But now let's move on to tactic number nine, the Golden Pig, where I talk about the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card for 99, and that is Agent of the Iron Throne, a fantastic background for two and a black. Commander creatures you own have whenever an artifact or creature controls from the grave from the battlefield, each punt lose one life. Now, yes, we are going to be sacrificing plenty of creatures, including our commander many times, but also, hey, we're going to be sacrificing plenty of artifacts, including treasures, which, yes, tokens technically hit the graveyard. So, hey, every single time you sacrifice a treasure, drain your opponents for three well one per opponent actually still this can be an absolutely amazing way to take your opponents out and absolutely no time to add to the pain that they're already having from jury so yeah a great card and definitely in my opinion the golden pig of this deck But finally, let's move on to tactic number 10, Great Lands, because yeah, we've got some great lands that can really help us out. First up, Rogue's Passage. Pay four tap to our creatures unblockable. This can just be a way to say, hey, my commander's coming through and you're gone. Then we've got Gazul's Fury, basically a fling on an MDFC land. The backside land, it comes up play tap, tap for a red. Also the front side, basically a fling. Finally, Song Mad Treachery, essentially a threat and effect on an MDFC land. Again, backside comes up play tap, tap for a red. Front side, five mana. Threaten a creature, gain control, but untap it, gains haste, and sure, if you want to fling it, if you want to sacrifice it, do so. But now this episode is coming to a close, it's my journey from you, so in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this deck, and if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below and consider picking it up. Again, it's incredibly budget friendly, and of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.